Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. Stuck in limbo, seeking advice. Today is exactly one month since D-Day. That's wild. In the beginning, every minute I was thinking I wouldn't make it to the next minute. Thought I'd die of the grief at any second. But here it is a month later and I'm still here. It's still extremely hard, but I'm eating, I can laugh at funny things, and I have thoughts again about stuff besides the infidelity. Now to my dilemma. My WS cheated and made the unilateral decision that we needed to divorce. I didn't even have my head on straight enough to decide, but I was leaning towards divorce as well. However, it appeared that he was out even if I'd wanted to reconcile. I've pretty much been North Carolina with him since D-Day, with the occasional text fight. I'd started trying to come to terms with being without him in my life forever, after 14 years. With the help of the good people over at r slash surviving infidelity and jumplady.com, I'd slowly started to accept my new reality. But then I found out that he'd gotten blackout drunk and was hospitalized for having suicidal ideations. I spoke to his dad, who wanted me to help convince him to get into an inpatient treatment program. I told his dad that I'm not really even a part of his life anymore. And I was torn. Like, have that whore help him. But, I'd hate to see my WS actually die, so I researched and sent him to rehab centers in our city. A few days later, he called out of the blue to tell me that I'd left behind an item that he knows I don't care about. It was clear he had something else to say. I asked what does he want? He finally spit it out that he just wanted to talk to me. He hates that we're enemies now. Would like for us to be cordial. I told him that he chose violence when he cheated, and that he has been the one giving me the cold shoulder, and I'm the BS. He said that the shame was just too much for him, he couldn't cope. We ended up talking that night for three hours, four hours the next. About everything. At some point the idea that maybe divorce doesn't have to be our only option was floated. But he has so many personal issues, the deep depression, the alcoholism, that infidelity recovery cannot fit in right now. I don't want to let in hope that we can still have a future with so much stacked against us. But I don't really want to get divorced, if I can be completely honest. However, what else is there to do presently? Live in a state of limbo while he works on himself? He's finally ready to, I believe. Has anyone else been in a position of trying to reconcile with a WS who has other issues that take priority? I really just don't know what we're going to do at this point. But he has so many personal issues, the deep depression, the alcoholism, that infidelity recovery cannot fit in right now. I don't want to let in hope that we can still have a future with so much stacked against us. But I don't really want to get divorced, if I can be completely honest. However, what else is there to do presently? Live in a state of limbo while he works on himself? He's finally ready to, I believe. It does sound like you both need IC and he needs to recover from his alcoholism, and the issues that caused it, before you can start to address reconciliation. If you try now when he doesn't have his life in order or his head on straight then you will just be hurt over and over again. You will be placed in a position of caretaking FPR him dot when you need to look after yourself. What if you both give it 6 months before you decide on divorce? Besides working on ourselves, what does the 6 months leading up to making that decision look like? I don't know how we're even supposed to interact for six months if we're not actively working towards reconciliation or towards moving on. Are we supposed to cultivate a friendship in that time? I don't know why, but the idea of a friendship with him makes me cringe, and I consider Ed him my best friend before D-Day. I want him as my husband or out of my life. Up right now, you need to take care of yourself that is the priority. By thinking his depression or his alcoholism takes priority, you are hiding from the truth that you will eventually have to face, and it is an ugly truth. 
My WS was slash is using illicit drugs the hard shit not little Mary doesn't matter you know who does. You. You matter. Take care of yourself you're a month out, get your own self in order until you do, trust me, you're in no position to help anyone or even make a real attempt at reconciliation. By thinking his depression or his alcoholism takes priority, you are hiding from the truth that you will eventually have to face, and it is an ugly truth. Can you expound on this please? What is the ugly truth? The truth is that he was unfaithful one month out, you've most likely not reached an equilibrium in your emotions you're sad, mad, disappointed, wondering what is going to happen next the ugly truth is that if you're going to focus on his issues you're delaying your own healing of this travesty for once, put yourself first you want to help him? Put yourself first. He's made his choices, he put his wants before your needs, love safety, etc., it's time you put your needs, your own health and sanity, above his bis poor decisions. Update, feeling like an idiot, I continue to test my pain tolerance. Need support. This is an update to the post I wrote just a couple of days ago. Things went from sugar to shit so quickly. WS and I started communicating again sometime last week, after almost one month of North Carolina. He called me up one day telling me how sorry he was, and that he doesn't want to be enemies, can't take me being out of his life completely. We started talking nightly, three to four hours a night. He seemed so remorseful, understanding, and caring. It also felt good to hear how much he was struggling without me. Hearing how he can't bear to be in the apartment alone. It doesn't feel like home anymore. He rolls over at night and expects me to be there, and he can't take it. I ate it all up and let it go to my head and heart. We decided to put divorce on hold, but didn't talk about any actual plans to reconcile. Just that we wanted to try to re-establish a bond, and see where things would go. I didn't push for more, because I don't think he can commit to reconciliation now with all of his issues. We made plans to get together yesterday so that he can see our dog. The night before he was in a bad mood, was struggling not to drink. I talked to him for 4.5 hours that night while he went between pacing his apartment and walking the neighborhood. He finally told me he was going to bed, so we ended the conversation. However, he called me back 30 minutes later. He was back outside walking around. But this call, every 10 minutes or so he'd say he'll call me right back and hang up abruptly. Mind you, it's like 3.30 am, and he's outside, so I'm wondering what the hell he could be doing. The third time he does it, he doesn't call me back, but texts me back saying that he is back home, he took an Uber and will call me tomorrow. I know it's a lie. This man would walk until his feet bleeds before paying to be driven a few blocks away. I check his phone records, and as I suspected, he was talking to his AP and I back and forth. Yesterday arrives, and I'm heading over to his place with our dog. I'm annoyed about the night before, and just generally nervous about seeing him in person for the first time since D-Day. Once I get there, it's extremely awkward. I'm looking at him and thinking about him ducking his AP. But I'm pushing through the uncombable feelings. We're walking the dog, sightseeing, trying to make small talk. Eventually it gets a bit easier. He asks if I want to get a red box movie, and watch it tonight. I agree, and we decide to sit down at a sidewalk cafe to eat. He's texting on his phone. We order our food. By the time it arrives, he's now telling me that he suddenly has to go into work later for some strange reason, so he can't hang out with me later now. It doesn't sound right to me. I ask how long will that take. He says about an hour. I say okay, I can wait for you at your apartment. He says okay, but seems annoyed. He then goes, well what if I was going to do something else later? I ask like what? He had nothing to do that day. Now suddenly I'm getting in the way of some unknown plans. He tells me that maybe he'll go bowling later with the guys. I go, so you haven't seen me in a month, but you're ditching me to maybe do an activity that you barely enjoy, with people you see all the time? 
We argue about this all the way back to his apartment, and I'm being everything I don't want to be, angry, argumentative, needy, clingy, etc. I'm wondering where is the man I've been talking to on the phone? That's the man I knew and fell in love with. This guy is the same uncaring, selfish, sob that I experienced on D-Day and leading up to it. Finally, he said that he's bailing because it's too awkward and uncomfortable for him. Usually when we're together it's a romantic thing, so this is weird for him. He says he also feels like how he imagines murders feel when they have to face their victim's family. He can barely look at me. It's too uncomfortable. I tell him that I'm the one who was betrayed, imagine how uncomfortable I feel. Yet once again, I'm pushing through the negative emotions to try to make something happen for us, and he's bailing. He doesn't know what else he can tell me. He just needs baby steps. I finally give up trying to make him understand my feelings, and head out. Before I leave he tells me, BTW, I look beautiful today. And then tells me he'll call me later. I get home, and check his phone usage and it shows that he called his AP a few minutes after I left. I feel so sad, and defeated. Almost D-Day level pain. I really believed he was remorseful, and was starting to see the light. How can he say that the affair was not worth it, he traded a nearly perfect wife for nothing, but he continues to do the same thing. And on top of that I'm angry I acted so ducking pathetic, right before he skips off to be with his AP, who I'm sure was oh so pleasant to be around. He's clearly as unhappy as he's ever been, so what is this accomplishing for him? Yes, I'm still hopeful that we can reconcile. I'm just so lost as to what to do. There's no way out of this that doesn't hurt like hell. He doesn't want anything to change. He wants everything to be like those days he was married to you and cheated on you. It doesn't seem like he has a desire to change, and over time he'll learn to hide his traces better. Do you want to be his wife for the rest of your life? By the way, you're not pathetic. You just want to go back to your good old and happy days. But are you sure that you will return to those good days now? Are you happy with this new personality that he has forced you to be? Do whatever you want but don't be his doormat. He wants emotional support from you. He's slowly easing into the relationship with the AP while easing out of the one with your. Don't give him this luxury. He's getting everything he wants. Don't give it to him anymore. Block and no contact except for divorce proceedings. Do not let him emotionally in anymore. Practice Grey Rock and the 180 method. Your current path only leads to further suffering for you. I understand you love him, but do you really want who he is now? He's still unfaithful. He just wants you to be his emotional support but he did not want to reconcile. Don't let him use you. Proceed with the divorce and continue with no contact. He's depressed? He's no longer your problem. You can start ghosting him immediately or if you think you cannot do it without explaining, be upfront with him and tell him you know he's still cheating and in contact with the AP. For your own mental health and peace of mind, divorce him ASAP. I'm surprised that you're surprised. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are.